So in today's video, we are going to be looking at meeting options within Microsoft Teams meetings. And this is because not all meetings are made the same. Sometimes you might want to be a little bit more granular on what people can and can't do within your meeting. So if you're new here, my name is Harry Lauter. I'm a technology strategist for Microsoft, and the goal is really to teach you technology. So let's just go ahead and jump into Microsoft Teams. All right, so we're now inside Microsoft Teams. First of all, let's go ahead and set up a meeting so that we can then look at the options for that meeting. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a meeting for Microsoft Teams training. We're going to add Megan and we're going to add Alex. And then from there, I'm just going to send that meeting out. So now that we have a meeting, we can go look at the meeting options. And there's a few ways of doing that. We can either do it from within Teams um, before the meeting started, or you can do it when the meeting has started as well. You can also go ahead and do it in Outlook. We'll look at that in a second. So if we're going to do it before the meeting started, so we know there's a few things we want to change, we can just click the meeting and then go ahead and choose Edit. From Edit, we now can choose the meeting options. And what this is going to do is this is now going to bring up a web browser. So whatever you know, default browser you have, it's going to bring up this web page where we can change the meeting options. So from here, the first option we've got is who can bypass the lobby. So these are somewhat straightforward or self-explanatory, but everyone is kind of as you would imagine. Anyone that joins a meeting are just going to bypass the lobby and join straight away. There is one caveat. If you're an anonymous guest, then and you're the first person to join the meeting, it is actually going to wait for a trusted user. So you know, maybe the meeting organizer or someone within your organization to start the meeting and then they'll go into the meeting. So they might have a brief time in the lobby. Then you've got people in my organization, trusted organizations and guests. So this is effectively anyone in your company, any tenant that you've trusted within Microsoft Teams, any guests that you've added to Teams. So anyone in your Azure Active Directory as a guest user. And then you've got anyone in my organization and guests, which seems somewhat similar to the one above, but it's not just blanket trusting a singular organization, for example. And then you've got only me. So only me just means that you will start the meeting. Everyone else will have to sit in the lobby until you accept them into the meeting. You can then choose whether or not you want to let you know, callers bypass the lobby. You can announce people whether they join or they leave. And then we got some pretty interesting ones. So who can present? So here we can say that you know, people in your organization, specific people are only me. I'm going to choose specific people here. And now we can actually select a presenter for this meeting. So I'm going to drop this down and I'm going to choose Megan and say that Megan's going to be a presenter. So what we're doing here is we're choosing roles within this team's meeting. So I'm going to be the organizer. Now Megan is going to be a presenter and then Alex is going to be an attendee. And this changes what they can do. As you'd imagine, a presenter can share their screen, all that kind of jazz. An attendee, really, they can you know, share their video or their voice, but they can't start sharing content or anything like that within the meeting. And again, I'll put a link to the different roles down in the description. And then we've got allow attendees to unmute. So you might do this in a larger meeting where you don't want any background noise or anything. You're recording it and you don't want to be interrupted. And then we've got allow meeting chat. And this is, as you'd imagine, you can keep it enabled so everyone can chat within your meeting or you can disable it or you can do it in meeting only. This means within the meeting, you can do you know, all of your chat communication. But when the meeting's done, this chat will be turned off and you can't communicate afterwards. So once you've got everything set up how you want it, you just need to go ahead and hit save. And now this is going to be actually configured for that meeting for when everyone joins. As I say, you could also do this through Outlook as well. So if you're in Outlook, you just need to bring up your calendar entry. And then once you've got your calendar entry open, you just need to choose this meeting option section. And then it's going to bring you back to the same web page and you can control it from there. So whether you're in Teams or Outlook, same experience. All right, so now let's go ahead and get everyone join the meeting and then we'll start from there. Okay, so now that we've started the meeting, we've got me as the organizer, we've got Megan as a presenter, and we've got Alex as an attendee within this meeting. So I did tell you that 
While a meeting is running, you can also change all these meeting options. And it's very easy to do. All you need to do is come up to these three dots, the more actions button, and then choose meeting options. And here we can see everything that we saw within the web browser before the meeting started right within Microsoft Teams. So if you need to change anything on the fly, you can absolutely do that right within the client here. So we can see that Megan is truly a presenter and the Alex is an attendee. If I choose show participants, we can also see that as well. So it shows you know, presenters is myself, Megan, and Alex is an attendee. And this is interesting because I'm gonna show a few different features just so you can have a look at the user experience. So for example, for Alex right now, you know, we could mute, we could make him a presenter, you know, I could make Megan an attendee and that will change their user experience. So if I just quickly look at that, if we go over to Alex, we can see because he's an attendee, he's not able to share his screen or facilitate, for example. And if we went over to Megan, Megan can still share, she can open up the sharing tray, share her screen and be a presenter within this meeting. So we're gonna say that this, as it's a Microsoft Teams training, well, maybe there's some more things that we wanna lock down as an organizer. So for example, you know, I don't want everyone to be able to join and unmute their microphone and just start talking. It might interrupt the flow of the training. So what I could do is I could go to the more actions options again, and then we can go to meeting options. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and I'm gonna say from this allow attendees to unmute, I'm gonna slide that across and then hit save. And now we're gonna say that all you know, all of our attendees, they can't unmute themselves. So if we go over to Alex, what it's gonna say here is, look, the mic is disabled for all attendees. And we can see that at the bottom here, it says now that only meeting organizers and presenters can unmute. And they've got a, you know, kind of that disabled icon here on the microphone option. So then if we went over, as we said, presenters, it can work. So if we go over to Megan, Megan can clearly mute and unmute her microphone. So. This is pretty interesting because you might be thinking, well, if I mute everyone, well, what happens if somebody has a question? You know, if it's a training, how on earth would we get Alex to be able to say, you know what, I do have a question. And I'm gonna show you this. If we go to show participants, right now, Alex has that disabled icon on his name. But if we hit the three dots, you can see here that I can only make Alex a presenter. I can't unmute him or anything like that. But from Alex's persona, so now we're on Alex as the attendee, if Alex raises his hand, what that's gonna allow us to do, so now that the hand is raised, let's go back over to our organizer. Now as an organizer, we can see that the hand is raised, and if we hit the more actions button again, now it allows us to either lower the hand, you know, maybe you know, we're not at the right time for questions or whatever it might be, but, we can also now do allow to unmute. So now Alex has changed from being disabled on his microphone to now having an ability to mute and unmute himself. So if we went over to Alex, you know, we can clearly see now that Alex can unmute, I can choose that, or I can mute it again. So, you know, even if you turn off everyone's microphone, you still have the ability to engage in that Q and A. And if you're done with that, maybe you know Alex has finished his question or whatever it might be, is now you can go back in and do don't allow to unmute again. And that's gonna go ahead and disable that microphone. I can also lower the hand like we just saw there as well. The last thing I wanna show is kind of a user experience is right now we've got the chat on. So you know, for example, let's go here to, to Megan. You know, we could just say, Hello, training starting soon. Let everyone know about that. But then if we go back as an organizer, so I'm gonna go here again and then do more actions. And then I'm gonna to go to do the meeting options. And I'm gonna go ahead for the allow meeting chat. I'm gonna move that to disabled and then choose save. And now what's gonna happen if we bring up the chat icon and the conversations, is we can still see what Megan sent. So everyone knows that the, the training is gonna be starting soon. However, the chat has been turned off. So now I can't, it's all grayed out at the bottom. If I go over as Megan, we can see here that the chat has been turned off 
And it's the same if we went over to Alex as well. If I went to the chat, I'm going to see Megan's information, but the chat has been turned off. So really, that's all I wanted to show. I wanted you just to see how these meeting options look, but also what you can do in the user experience. So for example, when you're even made it so that everyone's unmuted, that they can still raise their hand and ask questions if you allow it. So hopefully you found this interesting. Of course, have a play with it in your own environment because I'm sure you're going to have meetings that require these different options. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and like the video and we'll see you next week for another video.